All right, welcome to part one of the RS1 stretch and build. I'm gonna make this into tandem two seat. This is only gonna be part one. There'll be many more to follow, obviously. Uh, for those that are on the Razor forum threads, it's much like uh, Razor Joe. It'll be a full on suspension and some other goodies that are gonna come along. I do have a lot of unboxing to do later on. So right now is roughly seven o'clock, judging by the clock on the wall. I'm gonna try and go at it for one solid hour. I will do obviously a time lapse, that way it speeds up the video. But let's go ahead and get some tools and start stripping some plastic. Or for lack of better terms, let's get naked. Most of the plastics, they either have the uh, Torx head or they have them stupid little plastic push pins. They make a set of pliers to pull the push pins. I highly recommend them. Save you a lot of time and headache. I even carry them on the trail, not that they're really needed, but it's really handy. So keep at it. So here's another one that I run. It's, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, it's an in-between. It's a regular rear view mirror when you need it, but uh, I leave it on all the time. It's actually a rear view camera and a front camera. You can record with both of them. I have the actual rear view camera stationed in the roof just above my head. I can actually move it and adjust it. The RS1, if you've never been in one, it's hard to see out of, but even then, even if it's a two-seater, it's nice to have a rear view camera. Uh, I think I got this one on Amazon for, I don't know, $70, $80. You can, I don't know which side's up, so. This only powers on for a little bit. It, uh, this is the actual front camera, but it is the full width. It's very nice. It tucks in up, out of the, up into the cage and up and out of the way. Bye-bye. Ah. But, uh... Using these, they're kind of handy, they're cheap, they're replaceable, they're not waterproof, but you know, it's better than some of them that are out there on the market. Now, before I go and take this all the way off, I'll do a follow up a little bit. This was, the Apache hard case, it's waterproof. I believe it was the 4700, 4800. A little bit of storage space that you have left on this thing. This, with the help of a bracket, obviously I don't have both screws in it. So it goes in there kind of like that. And then once you get it in here, shove it all the way to the back obviously it's crooked because no two screws but then i just took a bungee cord cut it screwed it down to it and then the little bungee cords can come up through the little lock holes holds it in place that is where that's basically all of my storage i mean i got some of the bags on the inside but that's all of my tools the rest of it's a snatch block toe straps etc so get that back out of the way And you're back to normal. So continuing on. Granted, there's going to be some stuff that you're going to not see on the inside of here and so on. But let's face it, if you are trying to do this and stretch a razor, you probably don't need to be told how to take this stuff out. Please be patient, student driver. Seems to have been a bit of water in that one. For those that don't know, unlike other model years, this one has the ECU tucked behind the panel. 
makes this a real pain to get into, but at the same time, this is also where we're gonna have to do a little bit of work. We've got to extend the wires long enough so that way when the frame comes apart, we have long enough wires to get from the front to the rear. And as you can see, a mess of stuff down here. Now, another thing that I'd point out is I did at one time, Let's see if I can get a shot of it. You can get online, you can order you a simple prox. That's what we call it in the industry. Uh, proximity sensor, prox for short. But basically, anytime that my cable, my shifter, goes to the reverse position, it goes in front of this little bitty sensor and it senses that it's there. Well, what it does, if you were to follow it all the way up through here, there's a little relay under the dash. It actually pulls the relay in and then sends power all the way back here to my backup light. Just like a normal car, you go and you put it in reverse and you get backup lights. So here's park. It's obviously behind it. As soon as you pull it out and you go into reverse, there's reverse. So it actually senses it, pulls in the uh, prox and then the relay, and then you have reverse lights. Once you go to neutral, it's past it. You don't have them anymore. So on with more building. XTR switch plate. It's not bad. It has a place to add additional switches. It is kind of useful except for, but as you can imagine, this sits flat in the car. Well, as you can see, mud and everything comes in here, gets stuck underneath your switches, makes it a little harder to turn them on and off so they don't want to click right. So, especially the one that's up and down. So some of them turn left and right. This one runs up and down. It's not really all that bad, except for the up and down one is really bad. It gets underneath the ledge of this, and then you won't be able to turn it one way or the other. So, good idea if you stay clean. Uh, bad idea if you use a lot, if you go out on a lot of mud and things like that. Clearly we can see in one side and out the other. It looks like... Uh, We'll be taking it apart somewhere in here because in the SATV, they cut it off after the seat mount. So that way the seat mount and the shifter stays the same. I'm not sure I'll get into that. Take it apart here, most likely. Simple and simple. For the other side, looks like we just have two. So that should be easy. I'll have to relook at the photos. Oh, look at there. What do we got hiding in here? Huh. Optional. Obviously, a skid plate still has to come off. That'll have to be a whole different one. But it'll be different doors, different door hinges. Anyway, not to squirrel. Probably have to cut it in here and in here somewhere. So I'll try to figure out measurement wise, I'll probably take a measurement from here and from here. So that way we have a way to base for the next people that cut one of these apart. I am working out a deal. This is at Sandcraft. I do have emails out to them. So here's the thing. RS1s are not supported in the aftermarket very well because we don't have a turbo. But going through some parts lists and stuff, this has the front differential, same as the Turbo S. So it has the exact same part numbers for this top plate and some of the other stuff. Now, when it comes to steering, the only options that we have is a stock rack or uh, Sandcraft makes a steering stabilizer for the XP1Ks and they make it for a Turbo S. Now, obviously the Turbo S is much wider, so the tie rods would be a different length. 
XP1K, however, is 64 inches wide, same as this, or 62, 64, uh, fix me if I'm wrong. But the point is, is that Shock Therapy sells a race rack only that goes in this and the Turbo S. It is touted for, toted as a race rack for the Turbo S 18 through 20s and 18 through 20s RS1. So if the shock therapy rack bolts in the same way, go into the Polaris website. The only thing that I can see that's different for part numbers is the rack itself. So what that tells me is, is that it's most likely a different part number because when you order it, it comes with the rack and pinion. It comes with the tie rods and the ends. Now these are super ATVs. These will most likely get replaced. But the point that I'm getting at is that I'm trying to bring a new bar, uh, product to the market via Sandcraft. Their steering stabilizer mounts the same way on here as it does the Turbo S, because this is the exact same part number as a Turbo S. So I'm in email talk with them to get the mount plate for the stabilizer for the Turbo S, but instead have them send me the tie rods for an XP1K, because that is about the only difference besides, you know, width and the part numbers that I can see. So I'm gonna take a stab at it on my end of it with my money and try and make that happen. If it does, the only problems that I can see really is the battery mounts here. So I'd have to figure that out. At worst case scenario, these tabs here are unused. I might be able to just come up from here or as some of the kits show, you do a re uh, remote mount in the back. So be looking for that. That'll be a whole nother ordeal once I get to it because that rack is actually bent. I have another one peeking out over there on the bench that's brand new. And that's how the sand craft actually bolts is with a stock rack. Obviously I tried to get high clearance everything. I did get the Super ATV rear clearance arms. They offer it in a high clearance and a one inch rearward, but obviously I'm already going longer so i'd rather take the high clearance super atv does not however tisk tisk have high clearance front a arms for this you can see it on their website when they advertise parts for the rs1 that there is a set that they made for it but they never went into production maybe we need to make that happen still bumper's got to come off with the winch that is a factory Polaris one. I do not like my winch above the front diff, so took it in, welded a couple of plates, mounted the winch above it. This is where somebody like Super ATV, etc., needs to come in again. But as far as the UPS guy, hates my guts. The biggest component, obviously the drive shaft. I have one Rhino 2.0. I have another one to go in the front, two rears, trailing arms that are high clearance. I have no clue. The two boxes for the four inch portals, I'm, I'm assuming there's one or two of them in each. And then more boxes, got some ball joints and some other odds and ends. We can do some all of that unboxing later. I understand I do have a lot that is from Super ATV. I am not sponsored by them. Would it be nice? Yes, it would. But the upside to this is, is like Joe in the forums, Razor Joe. If it is paid for with my money, that means that I am going to talk about it the way I want to. This will be my opinions on their parts and pieces. If it just don't work, then it don't work. But so far, I've not had a lot of problems out of Super ATV. Uh, they're actually only about two hours from me. Uh, I would like to get down there and see their stretched RS1 and get some more photos of it. Don't know if that's going to happen. Most of the teardown is done. Uh, as they always say, like, subscribe, comment, stay tuned. There will be more stuff. There will be other stuff for other things besides razors. So, so stay tuned.